Hello, Marissa. It's lovely to see you. Thank you very much for giving up time out of your very busy schedule to come and talk to me about machinima. I know that uh, life is really hectic at the moment, so it's really kind of you. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. And tell us, have you ever cre created a machinima? Um, yes, I have. Um, with you, actually. <laughs> And it was great fun doing, um, although I think um, not as much fun for you because you did all the technical stuff, <laughs> all the patching and cutting up, <laughs> and but it was great doing it. And have you managed to use it in your teaching at all? Um, yes, I have actually. Um, I don't actually teach classes, um, regular classes. I train teachers of English. So any machinimas that I've made or other people have made, I tend to use them in my training classroom to demonstrate techniques of using them. So I, in that sense, I don't have that much of a need to keep creating machinimas, but, but my trainees love them. <laughs> That's nice. And what do you think makes them a useful resource? Um, well, um, most of the course books, um, most of t the teachers, um, you, teachers in training, new teachers, but also very experienced teachers, I must say, they have to use course book material, course book dialogue uh, to illustrate, to highlight um, new language points for their learners. And those types of listening audio um, materials are just, uh, just on a CD, you know, the faceless, um, decontextualized dialogues that the students just listen you know it's not like real life communication when you, you can see people face to face so um, videotaping um, uh, you know avatars in simulating a real life context if you like in second life is is a great enhancer and adds to the context to the uh, being able to visualize uh, the situation and the people in your mind. Interesting. Thank you very much. And how long do you think the ideal machinima should be then? I think if you're using it to highlight new language items, quite short. You need to be able to have something which is short, memorable, um, possibly humorous or uh, in some way you know not boring do you think it'd be good for learners to make the machinima themselves i think it would be great uh, um, as i believe very strongly that it would be great to be able to bring learners to second life to experience uh, language learning in this uh, virtual world because it's um, uh, the technology and and the value of uh, voice chat, which is very difficult to find um, in other situations, um, adds uh, so much um, uh, communication power to to language practice. Um, I think that's great. Um, making machinimas of on their own. Yes, as I would suggest, it would be good for them to be making any kind of project activity, that like creating a video, uh, creating animoto sequences. There is a kind of uh, more demand for technical knowledge, but with certain kinds of learners, that could be language input in itself and very meaningful input. In other words, um, the instructions for making machinimas could be um, a language language lesson or language lessons in themselves. Do you think the text added to machinima is useful? I'm talking about things like the call outs and captions and text boxes added. Do you what, what do you think about those? In general, I don't particularly like captions on images in the same way that I don't like the captions for example in many children's course books there is a dialogue there's beautiful visuals and then although you do have the audio the language is on the page 
Um, I don't. I think actually captions defeat the very purpose of creating a machinima in in a kind of simulated context. It, it's like imagine a film where the words of the actors would be in captions over their head. Um, it it to me doesn't really make much sense. I could see versions of the same machinima with without comp captions to begin with and perhaps added captions later for the learners to complete rather for them to view completed captions. I certainly don't see machinima as a grammar book. I think that kind of stuff is best dealt with on handout. In general, I tend to be against them. I think they kind of defeat the communicative value of coming to a virtual world just to have it captioned. Uh, do you think there are specific things that a teacher needs to keep in mind when making a machinima for classroom use? Yes, um, the machinima making in itself is, is a great activity for teachers and it can be very inspiring, it can be quite motivating. They're learning, they're developing as teachers by creating something with new tools and you experience that yourself and I've experienced that and it can be quite an, an enchanting activity. You can get carried away with all this enchantment and you can forget that when you do use these um, tools uh, you really need to consider the language aims of what you're showcasing through a machinima. I've found that very often teachers tend to forget that and they get carried away by the excitement of making a little film. <laughs> it's, 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 fant it's a fantastic experience but you really have to be uh, to set out with very clear language aims, a very clear sense of the lev level of the learners that you're going to be using machinima with, of the purpose of the activity, and and to keep to your language aims because language is what we're using this for. Uh, we're not using it to enhance anyone's creativity. It's an for me, it's an illustrative tool and a wonderful one as well. Um, so I think, yeah, keep, keep, keep the language in mind. Don't forget the language. Pedagogy before technology then, I guess, is the response. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very good point. Very so, good point. Oh, that's really useful. Thanks ever so much, Marissa. That's very kind of you.